podcasting? Get my pants out of my butt. Uh oh. Hi, are we podcasting? I think we're podcasting. Thanks for joining us at the hashtag I Mom So Hard podcast. Oh, that's our camera. You know what we should do is uh, it feels weird. we should okay. So we're well, go, yeah, let's talk- we're going on tour in the fall, like the next week. Okay, this week we're going yeah, on tour. God. So sorry, we're a little bit late this week, but we've been getting ready for the tour. Yeah, if anybody but, can take my kid to school, oh we're my looking God, for the seven twenty one. The or, boy one needs. Uh, I need. I need a pickup for the girl on Friday, and I need uh, just soccer support on Saturday. So they, if anyone's listening, they and, couldn't make this any harder on us with these woo. different times and these different like pickups. But I think we should have Michelle make a "Are We Podcasting" T shirt. Oh, that would be a great idea. That would be a fun one to do. So go to imomsohard dot com. We have merch and we have all the show tickets there. So go yes. there and then follow us, rate, review, subscribe. Can we? Can we tell everybody who is with us in the room? Oh my God, yes. Although all it I keep hearing is your computer engine going and exploding. I'm afraid it's going to combust okay, that Hold plant. on, let me fix it. I'm just worried it's going to start your quilt on fire and it's going to start that fake plant. Do you hear it? What is wrong with your engine of your okay, computer? Okay, listen, my, that old bitch goes through a lot. You know how often she has so much information on her yeah. that I don't have to keep in She's my like, brain. She's like, why are we still keeping my space? She has got all, all so many old videos of ours. And like every now and again, we I need have to do to like, something about this. I have to like take everything off and put it on a drive. But is, she sounds like me. She sounds very unhappy. She, this is what I hear like, right now. You guys probably don't hear it, but I hear and when your attention deficit di- disorder diagnose what's up OG do you want me to close some this windows sound no it's not going to make a difference this yeah, it sound- will it will well then you should close windows okay you, all right like, Kristen's really scared my computer's going to explode it, it I is here it's it sounds like a lawnmower it's okay I would just like everyone to know that everybody is now working on this problem except for me I'm sitting here and I'm just podcasting I think I just saved a house fire. <laughs> That's probably what's doing it. Excel's been weird. My computer's had some issues, you guys. Jen's like, you guys, I've been on my computer playing. Where in the heck is Carmen San Diego? It's a major issue that I'm having a problem with right now. I'm, you I, what? you know what I'd love? I know that everybody doesn't want this. I'd like a I'd like a solid power surge for just about six months where we don't have the internet anymore and we don't have computers anymore and we don't have technology. I want to go I want to go analog for six months, not during our tour. That would be hard. But after we're done, error reporting. Fuck you. (laughs) I don't know how closing windows is going to stop your fan on your computer, Jen. It might not work. I don't. Yeah, because I'll get distracted. Yeah. We all know that. Oh, oh yeah, okay. There Who had McDonald's? Yeah. I did. Okay. All right. Well, all I know is that that uh, that computer is on her last leg, kind of like us. Yeah. So if you want to watch this action, you can watch it on YouTube, but we did want to say really quick, we are so excited for today because we are back with Casey. Casey's here. Our girl. She's with us. She's in the room. It sounds like we're having a seance, but I know, but we kind of are real life. Casey. I do want to brag about her for a second. I think you're going to feel exactly the same way, but we um, did a show in Oxnard, California. We were testing some new material. Shout out to all the ladies that came out because it was a packed on a house. School night. It was so fun. It felt like there are just sometimes audiences feel like it they just want to laugh and be happy. Yes. And so you could literally come out and be like, my favorite dog died, and they'd be like, <laughs> and those are nights that yeah. feel so magical because it's and clubs are fun because the that you're so close to everybody. You can see yes. 50 faces all the way back. And so we had a lot of friends, come. a lot of friends, a lot of new friends, a lot of friends from far and wide. It's fun to do a local show, but the most special thing of the night was Casey opened for us, Yes, which we don't like a- get to do very often is have an opening person go out. So she warmed up the crowd. She played the ukulele. She sings like a songbird. Beautiful. Literally. You, it's not like listen, a voice where you're like mad at her for being beautiful and talented. I know. I saw a picture of Taylor Swift 
online. And I was like, well, that's a pretty picture of Casey. Yeah, it's and true. It's when true. you're someone that gets told that you look exactly like Reagan, the Australian break dancer, a lot different. And Jen gets told she looks like Sabrina Carpenter, His mother, all the time. Bullshit! You get told you look like Sabrina Carpenter. You all can try it's just the to look the other direction some- because you bull wad. These are truths. Here's the truth: people are laughing that are listening to the, this right now because they're like. Casey and Jen are both uncomfortable because Kristen is 100% right. <laughs> I'm 100% right. Well, you're beautiful Thanks. and unique and you don't have a doppelganger. So sometimes when somebody looks remotely like you, then we have to capitalize on I'm it. I'm unique. I like that. Can you please tell everybody I did my makeup without a mirror? She. This is how unique she is. She, uh, it's like she's putting on aftershave too. I don't know how, I've never seen anybody apply foundation this way, but it is just it's slapped on there. I had to tell her, I'm what like, do you yeah. do? I'm like, there's a gob on your nose. Well, I use a brush and then I use a sponge and like. Who has the time? <laughs> You're lucky. You're it's, lucky it's on I me at all. I don't think it takes that long. I really I can don't. do my makeup in less than a minute. And I don't think anybody's looking at me going, Imagine how quickly it would happen if you used a mirror. (laughs) She did liquid liner with no mirror, you guys. I I really can. It's kind of a party trick. I think I can do a full face of makeup kind of good, kind of well. It's great. It's incredible. I just was marveling at it. I was like, you're just like going off instinct or by feel. I don't know. I don't know, man. I just, it's the best I got going. And most of the time I don't wear it at all, which I am not someone that can go without makeup. Every time I go without makeup, people are like, are you tired? Are you okay? Are you tired? <laughs> like, no, I'm not okay. And yes, I am tired. And the blotchy shit is hormonal. I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's, yeah, get off my ass. I did. Kristen made me go to the dermatologist and get all my spots and speckles, yep. all of that checked, which um, everything came out fine. But um, Oh, that's good. You didn't tell me that. You got the one on your chest checked? Yeah. Okay, They good. said that's like a petechia or something like that. So- She was like, we're going to have you back. If you care, she's like, we're going to have you back to do laser stuff. Because she said, some things that I have are like melasma, Mm -hmm. which is like, you know, hormonal or whatever. So she gave me this topical that I can already tell is working to even out my skin tone. She burnt some stuff off, but then she was like, come back for laser and we can get rid of like some of these like broken capillaries and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that just because it's, it's. I mean, it's Sunday. I'm going to just like thin skin and oh man, God knows. Well, me. now that we're on the topic, I will just share this experience that I had. I got one of those big, you know about this. Okay. I have told this. I've told this story. It doesn't matter. I don't know where you're going right now. So Jen, you know, she goes and gets her, she goes to the dermatologist and she gets checks and all this stuff. And I have a friend that works in skincare And she's like, hey, I can get you a deal on this laser thing. And when I say deal, I'm talking like like 70% off. I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to say where she sent me because I know that like she worked a deal for me. This is like one of those super big lasers. Like I forget what it's called. Like a Morpheus. I don't think that's what it was. No. Here's how little I knew about it. I went in. To get a little bit of Botox, I, I'll right? tell you, they tell me it will look better. I don't need to know shit about it. Well, you just lay me down. That's Give me what a happened. stick to bite on. I went to a dermatologist. Well, no, I went to a dermatologist, got a little bot- Botox, got my stuff on my face checked. And my friend that works in skincare had set up the appointment for me. And then she's like, you know, you, you can get this laser. It will take off anything that is quote unquote, precancerous, but also just anything that's discolored. If you've got, you know, I had a little bit of melasma from pregnancy and it just gives your skin a reboot. And I was like, oh, that seems pretty cool. Okay. So I go in, I'm in there for 10 minutes and they, there's three nurses that come in and slather my face with numbing cream. And I'm like, wait, what, what's, what's going on? And they're like, do you have someone that can drive you home? And I go, (laughs) I go from where, and they were like, "Well, you're are we getting the cocktails. What's yeah. going on? Here? Like, what what are, what are we doing?" And they go, "Well, you're doing the laser or whatever." And I go, um, "And I, of course, my first thought was, wait a minute, I get like, I'm getting like the deal, right? Like I'm not like gonna get let's talk sticker. dollars. Yeah. I, mean, I need to talk dollars and cents before yeah. I go with this. And my face is like, and so they're like, not me. I'd be like, do it, and I'll split it on a couple cards." <laughs> 
whatever needs to happen so I look better. I've never done anything like this, so I have no idea what to expect. And then they go, did you bring anything for the pain? And I go, what are you talking about? Did I bring my own? And they and they kind of look at me like like a little Xanax. I'm like, what kind of shit is about to go down in this office besides my face skin? So far, it sounds really good to me. Le- sounds like Jen, it's going to... Jen, they came in... Okay, they put the numbing cream on, and then I don't see them for three episodes of, like, The Love Boat, right? I don't see anybody. <laughs> they give me Netflix, I chill, right? Yeah, that's the worst. Then and you, then, then, then you're left there with your decisions. And but like, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, this seems like an extreme amount of numbing cream. Yeah. Like, it's in my hairline. I don't understand what's going on. So then they can, wheel in. Can I say a sidebar? <laughs> Shut I'm, up. No, no, no. No, no, no. I love... <laughs> Why would you tell me to shut up? I thought you were gonna make a hairline joke. Nope, nope, nope. I I go to this wonderful PA for like all the stuff. Like she does everything for me. Not um, I have like a a PA that I go to to like make sure I don't have skin cancer. And then I have this woman who's like, "Here's what you need to do to your face to look younger. We're gonna put this shit in there." Like and Jen's I like, "Yes, do it." I'm all like, "I'm stuff. not doing anything. I don't like pain." But I really question the way they do numbing cream because they like will take us this like popsicle stick yeah slap it on you go back in and get some more and slap it on you and i'm like are you doing this with everybody like are you kind of double dipping the sticks aren't i you? would like them to quadruple the stick i wish they would have put me on under i think i should have had <laughs> anesthesia if i'm gonna be honest oh so God. i go under so they so then there's like this truck they wheel in with this big tube and I'm like, a truck, I, they back the truck. <laughs> but I was like, I, I'm, I'm like talking to the lady and I'm seeing the nurses. I'm like, hold, hold on a second. Hold, um, you guys know my friend, right? And I said, drop her name. I'm like, oh my this, God. Is the, this is the, this is the thing that I'm getting like 70% off. Is this what? And they were like, your skin's going to look amazing. I'm like, yeah, but uh, wait, uh, why is he is scrubbing not, up? Why, yeah, like, there, why, who needs a scalpel why, why right now? Why is there now? a crash cart? I don't understand <laughs> how intense is this treatment? And also I the, want it. Uh, no, I, you would, but I lay down. And they have a tube that looks like a vacuum tube that blows just cold air. That's just like, you know, like when you get a dentist and you they're like, you would the yeah. sucky thing and then the spitty thing or whatever. Okay, so this is just an air thing. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And then this lady brings out a wand and on the end it looks like a magic, like a like a light. And it they start going on my skin and it's like zzz, zzz. Yeah. And when I tell you, like each one was a burn. Yep. I I was like, hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. And I go, I think I don't want to do this. And they're like, well, we've already started. And I'm like, but I am uncomfortable. And they're like, it's going to look great. So I don't want to sound, and I don't want to make my friend feel bad. So I endure. And let me tell you, I was in more pain than when I was in labor. Oh, that wow. thing. So I have the hose on my face blowing air, but that's not even the worst part of this story. I don't know how these lasers work. So they burn layers of your skin off. My face looks like I fell asleep in Palm Desert and I woke up 30 days later. And then you have baby skin now, right? Not for three weeks when the crusty crust Ooh. crust had to fall off my face. So first of all, I don't, I did not read the brochure. I did not research the thing. I did not know about it. I did not do my due diligence. So I get out of the deal. And my face is super swollen and red. And they're like, you can't have sun exposure for two weeks. Mm. Well, it's baseball season and Uh my son is in a tournament. So I have to go to a tournament with this big brimmed hat with my face. And it looks like I've been hit with a baseball bat. It's purple. My face is purple. And my eye is swollen kind of like, like it, it just, it looks like I've been in like a motorcycle accident. And so I gray gardens my face. Yeah. I put this on and then. Three weeks later, they asked me to come in for a check, and they did a side by side of what my skin looked like before I went in, and what my skin looked like after I went in. Was it crazy? Crazy. Really? Crazy. Oh, that's the best. I don't know what the moral of the story is. I've never gone back for anything closely, remotely like it. It. You in, you have to endure it. But you have to you, endure but, the beginning, middle, okay, and end of it. Listen, I the, need to clean that to my nose. The second, uh, 
It's Ooh. too much. It's a lot. No. I mean, how can you go two weeks? You yeah, know what? I'm looking around like I don't live here. You but know what I, I forgot to say is when this happened, when I did this, um, w- is exactly one week after that we went into lockdown. So I did have oh, like good. ten days peel and of not having um, my anybody see my face. But when I tell you that like pieces of my face were falling off. That's exactly what was happening. I, yeah, I do peels and stuff like that. I've never done a peel. And, and I think I need to do like a more intense one. But um, I'd rather have someone just wash my face really hard. Oh, that won't do it. Why? Because it has to like um, hurt and suck and feel this, terrible. This is what I was going to say. Listen, first baby, very shocking. Second baby, you kind of know what you're going into and you can prepare a little bit. So I think second time oh. you go in and get your face burn off, you'll know. Yeah, you're I'll, gonna, take, I'll find somebody with Xanax. I'll take a bunch of it and then yeah. I'll have you drive me home. Exactly. And then I'll freaking tell you, them, you don't numb my face, you numb my soul. You'll be prepped for it. I'll, we'll yeah. try and get a two for one or some kind of. <laughs> I'll try to get another deal. deal. She's never giving me another deal. I called her like eight times. I was like, my eyes are swollen. And she's like, we're not even that close of friends. And she's like, it's just the thing they do, you know? And I was yeah. like, well, you know, I did get a good deal. So thanks, but you could throw in some free product. <laughs> well, I had this heartbreaking thing happen when I went to the um, my the PA who does like all the clinical stuff, like checks my spots. I go, she was beautiful. She's so young, you guys. Whatever she's doing to her skin is perfection. But also I was like, you came into this with some pretty decent skin. Like there's a, a reason. A lot of it is <laughs> genetic. For sure. But it also, like, I kind of feel more comfortable going in to get advice from from somebody who's, like, maybe 50, who's, like, I've done this. I know this works. Like, has, like, You mean that works in the business? You're not going to, like, Ace Hardware and going, what are you doing with your face? But, like, so this this PA told me, I go, you know, I see everybody, these trends. I got sucked into one. I bought the light mask, the LED mask. I bought one on Gilt. It was supposed to be this great French mask. Do they work? She goes, yes, if you do it every day. I know that's the thing, consistency. Every day. I can't do it. What I can't can, do anything every I day. We both know. I mean, we're not showering every day. Uh-huh. There's some days. That, this like, is four days. And it's not, mine's not light either. Like it's not lightweight. Like when I lay down, it doesn't feel good on my face. I wish I would have gotten one of those like thinner ones yeah. that like doesn't touch your face or that you could like have on and it's not heavy so I could watch TV or something. Because this is like, look, I should do yoga once a day. It's yeah. I, I think it just comes down to you should, you know, do the thing that you think is going to make you feel better. Like if there's something you want to do, then look into it. But do your research. Don't just go in and, and also. Hey, my friend told like, me to show up here. So this is, I worked in dermatology, you know, as a drug rep. And one of the things that I never knew is that your skin is like the largest organ that you have. It's an organ. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're. Depends. (laughs) What are you talking about? What do you have that's bigger than your skin? And what are you going to do with that? Are you talking about a wiener that's that huge? What are you going to do with that? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything with it. I was trying to make a wiener joke, and I don't think I'm sorry. I'm scared, I'm scared I'm of sorry. a wiener that's too, too yeah, large. I'm scared of the wiener that I sleep next to that he, <laughs> might, that he might wake up and want to, like, roll around. I'm like, stay asleep. I'm trying to watch murder. You have to teach in the morning. Like, yeah. I'm watching reels. Like, yeah. don't get any ideas. Shh, shh, but when you think down. of, like, what you do for your body, like, you're trying to drink water for your organs, you're trying to, like, take vitamins, you want to, like... You're saying doing it from the outside in, too. You can do it from the outside in. The other thing is, is, like, your your skin protects you. You have to protect your skin. You For sure, one of your steps has to be sunscreen. Of course, it that's what I'm saying. You can have three, but I don't think... I'm talking about night nighttime routine. Like nighttime routine. You gotta this put vitamins on it. You gotta put vitamins on it. But do, you gotta I put mean, the peptides on it. It makes a difference, Kristen. You do it because I know because in like you already look younger than me and you're only two years younger than me. And in like five years' time, it's gonna look like a fifteen year difference. And I'm gonna be sitting up here going, I don't do anything, and everyone's gonna go. She, 
Jen, give me all of the numbers. Number one, she's full of shit because we do use these these brands that sponsor us. Well, we use like One Skin. What are you and doing right now? Medicaid. Well, I'm giving them free advertising, no. but I'm using them. I we use these, and Kristen's skin looks better than most people her her age. Well, We're only two years apart, but I like trust me. I, I see, you know the stuff you read the thing and and I see people and we're definitely at that age where I'm like you know you used to like you kind of are at this age and Casey this isn't happened to you yet but it's going to happen to you where you just think everybody's older than you and then you hit this age where you think everybody's younger it's than weird you. and it really freaks you out when somebody is your age and you think like they're a lot older than you. You want to know what really freaked me out is when I was watching the news and I was like, all of these anchors are younger than me. I don't like people reporting the news that are younger than me. Well, yeah. That made me feel old. But then I also am in an acceptance that like they have time to like be knowledgeable and stuff. Like maybe they are smarter than me. What do you like, mean? Who? The anchors? Yeah. No. <laughs> They they should be. They should know. I don't think anybody's smarter Anchors than me. Should know more news than you do. I just think do, they're Kristen, younger and they have more. They have more energy. If it's not in People magazine or on people's Instagram, Kristen doesn't need that news. She doesn't want it. She doesn't need it. She's not going to pay any attention to it. <laughs> you and my husband. Oh, this is, <laughs> I call true. it. What do I say? And he gets so mad that I I I read the news and it's Us Weekly and he gets so pissed. Oh yeah. He's like. Yeah, I, not- but here's the thing. I know everything that's going on. I just don't talk about it because I'm like, I don't want to be boring at a party. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not. It's working. Okay. So I agree with you on that. You do have to treat your skin on some level. And what I, and this is going to be what we're talking about today. The thing that's driving me crazy is like this overconsumption, this expectation yes. of overconsumption. For instance, like talking about skincare In my opinion, again, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm just somebody that lives my life. You said something very smart. You said, like, if you buy a jar of moisturizer and you find that it's not working on your skin, use it on your elbows and your knees. Like, don't get rid of it. And I think overconsumption is an issue. And right now where my daughter is 11 and Delilah is, you know, nine going on 17, they all want to do this skin prep. They call it being preppy and yes. like aesthetic oh my and this we did expectation. This last night. We went to Sephora. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Eleanor was like, everything is drunk elephant, milk, glow um, recipe. Glow recipe. Elf I'm on board with because it's inexpensive and they can be playful with it. But I feel like they, and also the the skincare stuff that they are buying, that their moms are buying for them, is actually bad for their skin. I'm like, what are you yeah, doing? Some of them You've too- got collagen well, right now. I actually am way more supportive of them, like at a young age, getting in good skincare habits than I am about them being obsessed with like makeup because Delilah wants to wear makeup and I go, baby, I wear makeup because I've damaged my skin. Like there are things wrong. You also love putting on makeup. You're I, very good at it and you like it. And she is baby I, Jenny. I don't want my perfect nine-year-old daughter yes. thinking she needs to make herself look better right. or different. I, I, don't, I, I don't know that little girls are thinking that. I think it is something in us. Listen, the oldest thing on, you know, the Mine oldest is, artifact ever goes, found gotta, is hoop earrings. I got to cover up these these red spots. And I'm like, you don't have any. Does she want to do it with pimple patches? Yeah. That's because all the girlies are wearing are pimple wearing patches. Them. It's like, you know, I, I think the wearing makeup because you think it hides something comes maybe a little later, but I right. see why you're concerned I, about I it. I just want it to be fun. Like That's I love what I tell glitter Eleanor. on your face. Like wear, wear like exactly. lip gloss because it feels fun and it's different. And- yes. And I think that is a fun part of being a girl. I love liquid liner. I do like to put eyeshadow on sometimes, but Eleanor is very much in the like, and Eleanor, I have to say, she, I will go, I'll say, do you want to put a little bit, you can put on a little mascara, you're, it's the weekend. And she's like, no, no, that's, it's too much. And I'm like, who are you? You can't mm-hmm. ever have enough mascara. But she, you know, she, you put a little bit on her freaking thick that's lashes like, and it's oh, like, wow. bang. Yep. but she is doing the fun, like pimple patches and the, and we are talking about skincare and we are talking about, she's prepubescent. So we, yep. I see a difference in her skin. She's getting little pimples yep. and all that stuff. But the expectation, oh my God, of going into Sephora the best, and buying a yes. $32 cleanser. Can I tell you that the best thing sorry, I've sorry, seen, sorry, I'm, there's wait. a 
a bunch of things on um, like TikTok and Reels and stuff like that that drive me crazy. But also I saw something that I was like, okay, I needed to hear that and everybody needed to hear it. I think I saved it and sent it to myself, but it was this woman saying, just so you know, as you're scrolling through, it is not normal to have an entire storefront of skincare and of makeup. The people that are getting it are getting it for free. They're like influencers and stuff like that. Like, but your kids are watching it thinking like, oh, I need to have these oh. seven different Korean skincare oh. things. But like, they don't know the the secret behind it, which is like, they're not, that influencer isn't spending all that money. Like I yeah. asked Delilah PR last night. Are really when we went to Sephora, I go, are like Michaela J, her entire house is makeup. And she doesn't watch Michaela because she swears, but you and yeah, I love Michaela. I do. But like, she's not paying for any of that anymore. Like I know. It, it all comes for free. And like- So these, she's like Nordstrom, basically. Like it is, but it does, doesn't, it, don't it you looks, see it and like start to go like, oh, I God, want I want that. some stuff. I want, all these, I want 75 different lip glosses okay, that I'm never going to wear. influencers and stuff like that. And I have to remind myself like that, like these home designers and stuff like- that's not real life. Like yeah. they're, they're getting all this stuff for free. Do you a think lot the of women that do, cause the one that I find outside of skincare, which I think, um, again, I do say, I will say this. We're happy with Elf. So happy. Yes. Eleanor is, we, I, I that's the one thing where I'm like, okay, um, their, their products are inexpensive. And if we want to play around and they also have skincare, I'm okay with that. Also, just watch for what's the thing that you're not supposed to put on young skin? It retinols. Comes, retinols. Retinols can be very damaging. And so, you know, you're I I, can, to me, going to Sephora, I just don't want to do it anymore. It's, it's, I will go in on Eleanor's behalf, but like you go in there and it's like, it's too expensive to pretend around. You know, it's just, it's too expensive. I I'm not a medical professional, although after I've had a couple of drinks, I am. I haven't had any yet, but like retinols, and retinoids are supposed to speed up cell turnover. Yeah. So they will dry out your skin and they also make you susceptible to sun damage, which little girls do not need. Yeah. They don't need it. Their skin turnover is oh already so my fast. God. Like, I look at Eleanor's skin and I'm like, I would pay millions. Nope. Oh my I God. wouldn't. I'd get 70% off a laser That's and try right. to go turn What's back the hands of 70% of a million? What's 70% of the most pain I've ever been in in my life? And was it worth it? I don't know. You tell me I did it six years it's ago this whole, or four years ago. It's this whole aesthetic. The girls are using oh, it. This is the word. That's the, the word. Aesthetic. Aesthetic. It's like the look that they all want to have. And Even their pen cases. Eleanor was like, um, I need a sage green backpack and then my matchy pencil case because it's so aesthetic. It's these TikTok bitches. I blame the with the housewife Mormon. I am gonna Secret Lives of Mormon wives doing all their fucking dances in their beige houses. You guys are not gonna believe this. No, you will. We are into the space where the lockers are yes. aesthetic. Yes. Eleanor's locker. She comes home and she's like, <clears throat> sorry. So she comes home, she's in sixth grade. They've got lockers that are like, you know, the half size ones. Yeah. So I don't know, man, you should have seen my locker in high school. I think they found like a runaway you in my you locker. You steal a milk crate from yeah, the like, back of a grocery <laughs> store? Barely. I never, like, I thought girls that had like a mirror in their locker were like going too far. I was like, yeah. there's one in the bathroom. Like, what do you need? Yeah. And I just dumped shit in there. Like papers, I found like it literally, like it just was a complete disaster most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Not today, y'all. Now the girlies have little shelves that are inserted in there. They have wallpaper. They put peel and stick wallpaper in there. My friend's daughter has a chandelier that turns on when you it's open. LA. Okay. I can't say I hate all of that. I think the expectation you, is too much, but I, I do love the idea that because my locker was a total hot mess, like you would have to it? like- Oh my God. Yes. I we, love doing that because I think you're like so oh organized. God. Until I was probably in my twenties, I was the messiest person. Were like, you really? My mom would be like, go clean your room. I'm out of glasses and plates. I'm like, and there'd be like cheese in my room from like milk and stuff like that. Like you would but open my we locker. Younger, it would like, so it never went bad. You were like, yeah. I can eat that shit in a yeah. nuclear I'll eat that war. cheese. Yeah. It would like fall out of my locker. Same. Like, and I just- I kind of wish, 
like, you know, the eighties parents would have been more involved at all to my mom to go like, here's how you should organize it. Like you can keep your books here. And like, I think that would have been great. I could have used the help and the guidance. I don't know. Sometimes I think all this information is just another way to feel pressure. Let like, me tell I'm, you why like, I like it. It's supposed to hold your damn books. And it's like, ex- you know what <sighs> else you are like on your own at middle school and high school. I think having this like little sacred space where you, you're you like, you know what I need? I need a cold water. I need a mint. I need a tampon. I need like whatever to have everything that you need in this space and to feel like it's a little safe yes. place away well, from Well, now home. you're making me sound like an asshole because I'm not, that's I'm not saying, what I'm talking about. You don't need this to over decorate it is, though is what you're there, saying. It's overkill. And, yeah. And my thing is like, I think, like I felt it myself. I was like, I just didn't know. I didn't know that yeah. that was what we were doing. Oh, so know. Eleanor came home and she's like, hey, mommy, like the other girls really have decorated their lockers. And I'm like, what do you mean? So we went to one of the five events where they get money from you. And we were walking down the hallway. And let me just tell you, if you ordered the purple padlock from Amazon, we all have the same code. <laughs> so for some reason, my daughter has memorized like six or seven of her friends' oh my God, locker numbers. Hilarious. Well, yeah, you locker would, combos. you could share or something. Yeah, like. so like they leave notes for each other. It's very cute. But Eleanor is like, she's like gifted. I'm like, good God, Eleanor. We've So she's like, mom, I just want to show you one. So she opens one. It's like butterflies come out and it's like oh twinkly lights and a carousel and like, you know, freaking glitter everywhere and a chandelier and literally wallpaper that looks like you're walking in a home design store. Oh my God. And nothing about it to me seemed like it was something a kid did. It yeah. seemed like something well, yeah. mom did, which is cool, but it does make me think I it's, didn't know. So well, I felt it's another thing that we, we have to keep up on. Yeah, we don't so even go, know what we have to keep up on. Yeah. So I like opened Eleanor's locker and like a raccoon came out. I felt bad. I was like, Oh geez. So then what do we do? Oh, we go to Timu. And we get, yeah. it was perfect. It was this little set with a, like a little um, shelf and a place for a dry erase marker and a little mirror. And it was really sweet. But then she told me again, she's like, I want to do more to my locker. So we go back to the school and she shows, she opens like six lockers. And these lockers are like decked out to yeah. the nines. And I, again, I'm saying like, wouldn't that be cool if that was a school event where like all us parents could just li- leave a bunch of supplies and let the girls have a day to decorate their lockers instead yeah. of it being like, Hey, here's another thing you need to front load because otherwise your kid's going to feel left out. And I, I did feel a little bit of ache for parents who, if you don't have the flexibility to go to the school at three o'clock and yes. help decorate, that could make your kid. And I, that is not any, I, I know there's moms out there that really get into the dorms, into the lockers, oh, into the, the dorm moms. stuff, it's, but I'm like, it is kind of this expectation. It's the thing that we talk about that we're trying to pump the brakes on those pressures with moms. And I'm sort of like, are we, are we doing it we're or getting, are they doing it? We're getting back into we're it. We're going and, backwards. And I, I do think it's like- It's the internet. Like when we started doing the I Mom So Hard videos, there was a lot of that like perfectionism, which is why we were like- Oh God, we're not that. Can yeah. can we be that and see if anybody else is like that too? If that yeah. like resonates, and lo and behold, it did. But it's happening again, like gangbusters, and it is like and unintentionally, like you said, like we oftentimes I'll send you a link to something, and you're like, "Where do these people live? That this house is so big." And I'm like, "Oh my God, I'm getting fed information and pressure, and I don't even know I'm taking it in like that." Yeah, you are. You just what's normalized in your head is so much like. I was telling you about um, our my good friend Jenny, who's our good friend Jenny, yeah. went to this event and I was texting with her from soccer and I was like, hey, how's it going? And she's like, I feel like shit because I was at this event and like everybody was dressed to the nines. Like they're spending so much on like perfect hair and stuff like that. Like I just felt like outpaced and like I wasn't doing enough. And that's like just her. And it it doesn't even bring into account what you care about more than yourself, which is your kids to feel like outpaced. And like, I, like I missed Dashiell's, I, he doesn't get to sign up for after school activities because I missed it. And I go to this like school event and I'm like, Hey, when do we sign up for that? They're like, you missed it. They're all full now. And I'm like, fuck, that's kind of my thing is where I'm like, I want to know where all that's when that stuff is. And then I don't miss it. And then when we have to travel and go out of town, I don't feel like I'm behind, but guess what? I've missed all this stuff. So now I feel like I'm behind on like 
what Dash wants to do. Uh-huh. Like, and then you introduce locker art and aesthetic and, and locker more design thing. to it. I well, can't deal with that. And I have to say this. <laughs> I, in a, to support what you're saying, like, I feel like it's like you're saying one more thing to add. Like, it's not that decorating a locker is bad. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is how far are you going to go to have it be such an ordeal that now your kid is seeing a thing become an ordeal when like my, my blinders were, I was like, I just thought this was a locker that we could put some, I had magnets for Eleanor. We had stuff. It's another thing that you feel like if I'm not on this, my kid will feel bad about it because exactly. you don't, don't have unif- you have uniforms. Yeah. Which is Thank great. God. That takes that off the table. But then you have the locker thing. And, that and is then like eventually dorm rooms. And I feel like we should be having conversations that are a little bit more about moderation because the expectation is then we're handing it to our kids. Yeah. And I think we were susceptible as Generation X, especially Generation X, and if you're an older millennial, because our parents we're not present. Like it is a known thing. It's called the neglected generation. So now we're trying to compensate and be there for everything. Right. And you, it's hard to know when to just press the brakes, but I will say this, I posted a video and it was, I was at the um, soccer field and both Jen and I, our schedules, we have both, you know, Jen has a fourth grader and a sixth grader. I have a sixth grader and an eighth grader. And it, the, the schedules explode at that time yeah. because nobody can drive. Yeah. So it is, it's just, nobody's, you know, soccer's are at the same time at nothing's close by. It's, it is every mother out there that has kids this age knows what we're talking about. And I was at the field and I, I had, I was going to skip Finn's game because I had, Colin was there. He's the coach. I had another game right after that. You and I had just worked 16 hours the day before and I had two following games. So I was like, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to miss Finn's game. It's going to be okay. And then I sat in the car and I was like, this is going to be the game. Either he gets hurt or does something yeah. great. So I take myself to the game and I thought, huh, I think that's a tidbit. So I just did a video and I was like, you know what? I told myself it was okay if I miss a game, but then my mom guilt took over and I'm at the field. I was shocked by the number of moms who said, you'll never regret going it's the right thing to do. If my kid plays, I'm at the field. This, oh, nobody this, let you off the hook. No, like four people were like, your, de- your husband's there. It's cool. You can miss a game. I'm sort of like, the the the. I was like, this is more of a reflection on the kind of demand we put on ourselves. Totally. Instead of just saying like, like, I guess maybe I wasn't crying. Obviously, I wasn't in a state of like pain or needing the break. So obviously- I could go, but I do think maybe once in a while we could say to a mom, like, you know what? You don't need to go to the game today. How about I just record for your kid too? And I send you video. Like, it, it, I don't know this, the, it, it worries me that we don't really, we say we want to give each other a break, yes. but do we really Are give we, each other a break? I, I was thinking about this this morning and we didn't even know we were going to get here discussing this, but um, I was saying to Dash and Delilah the other day, because for us, it is everything that they do, school, sports, everything. I say, I care if you try hard. I don't want you to waste your time or anybody yeah. else's to go out there and not give it an effort. Like, it's disappointing to you. You're never going to feel good about yourself not trying hard. Yeah. You don't have to, like, win the game. You don't That's have to get too. straight A's. I just want you to feel proud of yourself for trying hard and, like, That's working exactly hard. That's exactly what we say. And I said to them... I need to work on that because I've been so tired lately. Like the other day I told Chris and I was like, I can't work. I need to go back to bed because I'm exhausted. Yeah. And I did. And I think sometimes I need to be better to let myself off the fucking hook and go, you you did your best. Yeah. Maybe you didn't win. Maybe you didn't get a straight A in this category, but you did try hard. Yeah. And like, that's enough is to like well, try hard. Also isn't trying hard accepting that like if there is a window where you could give yourself a little bit of time back to just recharge that that in itself is trying hard. Isn't it more of like saying like, Hey, you know what? Um, Eleanor, like we're going to make your locker look really awesome, but I want it to be your idea and you're going to measure your locker and cut out the things. And we'll, we'll, we made magnets together. Like it was really fun, but I, I had to exercise control of not, wanting to get there and like get on Pinterest and go order stuff and go buy, 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 buy. It, 
it feels like this pulse of pressure. And now that we have fucking TikTok and more social media, it's coming at you in different ways. So it isn't, it, it is a silent pressure that I feel more and more, which I think it's because also we're comedians and we're taking in all this to, in order to make fun of it. Yeah. But, um, it's, you know, when you don't know that this, this thing is a thing and then it's a thing, you're like, holy shit, I, where am I going to be at in this? Where am I going to play this? It's like the, Delilah, <laughs> I've expressed probably 40,000 times that my daughter hates anything except for pasta, chicken nuggets, <laughs> and French fries. That's a like, freaking, I, you know what? I'm on board. Okay. I, I get it. I, I get it. hate kale. Maybe she will force herself to barf if you try to get her to like eat anything else. It's an issue. But the other day, she's very, okay, not the other day. It's almost every day. She's so into Starbucks and she keeps asking for this boba drink from Starbucks, oh, which is absolutely yep. like this TikTok or what, and she's not even on TikTok. And they're so bright colors. It from. It's like pink with blue little, trust me. It's the other girls are seeing it on TikTok and telling her about it or something. And so last night we, because we went to Sephora to get her friend a thing for her birthday and we walk by the Starbucks and I go, next time you ask for Starbucks, I'm going to make you get a coffee and drink it because Starbucks is a coffee restaurant. Yeah. And I'm not going to pay four bucks for you. I'm like four bucking myself to death too. Four bucks for this drink, four bucks for a, a cake pop. Like then I Mm-mm. get a coffee because we're there or water's four bucks, you guys. Start it's doing like, the math on Starbucks. It's crazy. You, you want to know what? I've started to do because Starbucks, Starbucks, I can, I can make an argument for because they have a bacon, egg and Gouda, Gouda sandwich there that is like not super terrible for you. And it's five or six bucks. And I love McDonald's. Everybody knows I will go to McDonald's, but you're looking at like 14 bucks for a freaking like meal, oh my God. which I just think is like Starbucks. The food is a little bit nicer to your body. So like both are bad, but if yeah. you, between two evils. And so what I've started doing is because I have two different kids at two different bus stops and they're both hungry when I pick them up, I've started making food the night before and I'll heat something up and I'll take it in a like to go container. So yesterday I picked up Finn from the bus stop and I had a chicken enchilada. He's like, can you ever just have, he always texts me, mom, you know, it would really make my days when you pick me up, you have Starbucks. And I'm like, yeah. or a homemade chicken oh enchilada. Oh my God, where do they get in this? In a Tupperware container. Well done, Starbucks marketing, because yeah. my daughter says the exact same thing. Like, if you loved me, you would surprise me with Starbucks. I'm like, I, you want to know the first coffee I had? It was at Village Inn when I was studying for a gall darn statistics well. test. And it tasted like a boot. And you want to know what I love today? Freaking boot coffee. But I, Starbucks is like something that we started to do on the road. It was new. For, I didn't do Starbucks until I was 40 years old. Oh my gosh. I did it when I was in outside sales. That's, I would have, I think that's different. I would get a chai latte because like it would keep me from getting hungry. Like I would, like I would get it in the morning and then I wouldn't like have to stop. But I, I grew up on Folgers. I started drinking coffee way too early. So oh, I'm man, at the epitome Folgers. of health. I also had a really long conversation with my husband yesterday. The longest that we had yesterday was about whether or not Taco Bell was healthy for you. Because I do feel like I a like chicken- I like Taco Bell too. I do feel like a chicken soft taco is kind of a better choice than like a big old burger sometimes, right? I can- I think fast food tastes good. If it didn't taste good, people wouldn't eat it in this country, wouldn't be in trouble. But it's freaking good. It's good and it's fast. And it. But what's bad in a chicken taco? Like a chicken soft taco from Taco Bell? I just think everything is processed. You know, it's like you're not, you're not, there's, and it costs money. It costs way more. It costs so much money. It used to be 79 cents when we were in high school for. Or if you go to, I'd get, go to. um, Four bucks. It's four bucks now for a chicken soft taco. Yeah. Or you go to Taco Bell and I'd get a a seven layer burrito and it's supposed to be the vegetarian option. So then I'd be like, can you throw some chicken in it? And they were like, Jesus Christ. But the interesting thing about a seven layer burrito at Taco Bell is it was beans. Yeah, it was two layers. Beans, beans, beans. Cheese, cheese, cheese. And oh my God, when I was pregnant, I ate those like, I was like, I can't understand why I'm gaining so much weight. No wonder you had those high pitched toots. (laughs) It really does make you. You know what? If it loosens you up in pregnancy, God Mm, bless you. The last thing I need to do is push out anything. God, you now know. I want Taco Bell. So I know, right? But I think my uh, the the thing that I'm um, that I think is worth mentioning is like this pressure for aesthetic. Yep. And the only people that can change that 
is us. Like yeah. the moms. Yeah. Like when we get caught up and it's hard, it's really hard. It's hard to say, I can't do it for whatever reason, maybe financially. Like we just told, you know, we, and oh my God, this is not to sound sad, but we, we, Finn has this option of going on these spring break trips. They're so expensive. They're, they're obnoxious. They're so expensive. And he doesn't seem that excited about yeah. any of them. And I was like, if you're not literally jumping out of your skin to go do a mission trip in Puerto Rico, you're not going. Like, we're not spending that money. Let's yeah. be reasonable a little bit. But you're so worried about your kid experiencing disappointment. But what I found is like, if you're just honest and sort of saying like, hey, man, we're not going to pot, we're not going to Starbucks every day. Like, that's a waste of money. It's not right. smart. We can put that like... Your kids can hear you say, we can't do that, or we're not going to do that. And I don't think that they're going to be shattered. I don't think their their lives are ruined or you're not showing up for them. Like you can do it in more moderate ways. I think, I think, listen, ask my kids in 10 years, you know? know. Well, I'm, listen, I don't do any, I'm not doing any of it right, but I do with my kids and what works in our house. Delilah's a little bit younger, so her concept of money is not as strong. Like Dashiell has a wallet full of cash. Like I, if we are need cash in like a pinch, oh, we go to Dash's wallet because it, yeah. it's in there. And he just, he's like, I'm not going to spend it until I really want something, you know? Yeah, but he'll be like, mom, can you buy me Starbucks? That's what they do. If you give them their money, they're like, whoa. Oh, oh totally. Tighten up, mom. We're not going through Starbucks. I'm not going to, $7 on your chai latte. So, you can get that on your own. We did go to Claire's, which is the death of every mother. You gotta go. Who's gotta you gotta go. You gotta go when little. Because she said, she loves, she's like, I want to get some like Halloween earrings. Her ears aren't pierced yet. So luckily they didn't have any, um clip on they d- or they didn't have clip yeah, on how they do ears. have clip ons there which are nice for girls that yeah don't have- and i said to her i go i'm not going to get you any just regular you wanted halloween and i told you you could buy a couple pairs of halloween clip on earrings and so she go then they had but she was like i could get this necklace and this wristband this stupid thing i go you have 15 dollars. you can buy junk here you can buy like one thing here or you can go on to amazon and you can probably find 10 pairs Patience. of Halloween clip-on earrings for $15. And she was like, okay, I'm going to go home and order them. And she did. Yep. And I was so proud of her because- We can just them press the, the button It's now. the either or. It's the either or though of saying like, here, here you can get that immediate gratification, which is I one of the things I have trouble with with shopping is because I'm like, it makes me feel good in this moment and it's new. And when I, like, when I wear the new thing, it makes me feel- or I can teach my kids to make the smarter decision, which is like hold off the immediate gratification. Like- Listen, I get that. I just went to Home Goods and did some real damage. Like with Eleanor, who makes shopping so fun. I took her to a Nebraska game. Jen and I took her to a Nebraska game, a bar, not yeah. a bar. We took her to a restaurant that is the Nebraska, yeah, you know, fan base place pub, you go whatever. to pub. Yeah. And we took her in there and. She was, she was not having the best time and she was like wanting to get decorations for Halloween. And I said, okay, I'm going to give you a $50 spending budget on Timu. Let me tell you how fast it went. You say that I'll give you a $50 spending budget on there. It's it. That's how fast she spent it. And it was like, and it was bought Yeah, and it was 50 bucks and it was like that fast. And I remember like scraping to save 11 bucks to get my ears pierced. And it felt so good to have like $11 to put out. It's different for kids. It's different for young people. Everything's electronic. Money feels different and looks different. But um, it's also, I totally love shopping too. I like the way new things feel. I'm, my concern is the pressure that we put on sort of being, as my friend Erica would say, reckless spending or reckless pressure. Like, like going in and seeing the lockers and feeling like I'm a bad mom. Yeah. I literally, literally went through, like, I was like, oh my God, did Eleanor go to school, open her locker and see that it's like sad and feel like I'm not giving her what she needs. And should I be, you know? And then I was like, hold on, hold on, just go with her to school and, and create stuff that you have at home. Like, let's get creative, man. Yeah. Let's get creative. Yeah. And that's, I gave myself a break. I just... That's good. Even though I still feel a little bit bad. I I know. I we've had this conversation before where I feel like my daughter has a very 
uh, unique personal aesthetic, like the way that she likes to dress and things like that. Like, and I see other girls in her class and she's not dressed that way. And I realize it's my issue. Like, no, it's your influence. She (laughs) dressed, it's not your issue. It's, I'm like listening to her and my face is trying not to go. Like, what part of this is surprising? That would be like if I'm like, my daughter likes wearing overalls and button ups and she is refers to, you know, I mean, I'm she, like, yeah, she's never been the like adorable bow in her hair. Like a couple times when I've begged her, I've been like, please. Oh, she's so girly and she's so sweet and she like, she's got her own thing going. And I think it's really awesome. I think, you know, that letting her be her own self is the thing we should be encouraging, wrap, enc- encouraging yeah. and not wrapping ourselves up into what this, the phone says, or the, I, you know, the TikToks. I, I just, that's why I said, I wish we could all go analog for six months. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jenny, Maybe. I feel like we, we got to get to a hot flash, right? Don't oh, you think? I do have a hot flash. Hot- Non sequitur, but I've drank a bunch of Diet Coke, and I don't need to tell you, ladies, my pelvic floor is not very strong. I want Casey's I, like, oh no! I want you guys to go. Uh, I made Kristen and I follow these guys because literally, this hot flash it uh, it checks off all my boxes, and Kristen, oh boy. she's going to be like, um, is that uh? She like not for hot guys. Well, let me because tell you what. Jen's idea of hot flashes are sometimes I'm going to be noble. Meanwhile, I know what her real hot. Yeah, that's those are hot guys. Okay, Whoa. so I just showed it to her. Okay, so, so no, I'm glad not, you're being more honest. I, I no, I do think I do get turned down by things that are different than you. This Always. is a hot flash. Okay, it this is, is a straight up hot flash. This though. is a hot no flash. Apologies. That's that's fantastic because okay, it has all the things I love. Fire Rescue Dogs is the name <laughs> of this. It is, uh, it's a lot of shirtless Fire firemen men. lifting weights and also like lifting dogs. So these, uh, oh. these firemen, they go in and like these calendars and stuff, they go to like dog rescues. And I'm telling you, it's, it's one of my favorite TikTok things is when a woman like records firemen coming out of like, just like, you know, they're like, in the middle of their shift or something, they're coming out of a restaurant or something. Holding puppies, oh my God. you guys. Holding puppies or opening the door for someone. And she's like, look at that guy. Just take it. Have you ever seen that TikTok? Oh, there's girls on there Let too. See. see? Oh. Okay. That's. Hey. <laughs> All right. God, puppies. You guys, it's just, it's just enjoyable. You can spend a lot of she's time like, deep I love diving. the puppies. Like you can tell your husband, oh, look at that puppies. And I'm saving dogs. I'm saving rescue dogs. Your, your husband's like. I'm going to do push-ups. And it's, my uh, husband would be like, those aren't just puppies. It's a fire and rescue, bunch of hot guys Dude. rescuing dogs. It's got all this stuff, Don't ladies. just shoot fish in a barrel, all right? If you're hot enough to be a fireman, you're not wearing a shirt, and then you pick up a puppy, okay. It's like somebody I slashed an orgasm. both my Achilles heels. I know. I'm like... Uh, Whoop! Oh, no. Did we just lose it? Ran out of card, I bet. But no. that's good. That's the end. That's, uh, we add, I think we podcasted. I think we did too. I think our video just ran out and yeah. I picked my nose on camera. There you go. There you go.